QuickBooks Online, Vertical Analysis, Profit and Loss, P&L, Income Statement. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, choosing the option that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And we're going to be choosing the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. People often think I'm a robot because of my Superman-like strength, but no. Anyways, we're going to scroll in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at the 125% on the zoom in. We're going to hit the cog drop down noting that we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views to see where things are located within them. We're going to be duplicating a tab up top to put reports in as we do every time. Right click to duplicate the tab. Right click the duplicated tab for a double duplication. Back to the tab to the middle as the tab to the right is thinking reports on the left and then the balance sheet. And then as that's thinking, I'm going to go to the report on the right or the tab on the right and then the report on the left and then the profit and loss or the income statement, the P to the L. Then I'm going to close the hamburger and also known as the hamburger and then change the name from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it tab to the left it's still thinking you're still thinking i'm going to go up top we're going to close the hamburger and range change 010122 tab 123122 tab run it that's the setup process we do every time back to the tab to the right we're now going to be doing what we would call a vertical analysis so remember these are our main two financial statement reports balance sheet income statement otherwise known as the p l profit and loss and we looked at comparative or horizontal analysis last time which often takes the place of or looks like or will look like having one period compared to a prior period and then the difference between the two and a percentage change now we're going to do a vertical analysis now note when we did the vertical analysis on the balance sheet, uh, it's it's kind of a little bit more straightforward because we compare everything to like the asset line. But on the income statement, it doesn't really make sense for us to compare everything. Well, it, it's not the most common thing to do to compare everything to net income, the bottom line. It makes the most sense to do a ratio analysis, a vertical analysis structure to compare everything to the goal of the business, which is revenue generation, and that's income or revenue. So we're gonna compare everything to the the revenue line. That's the most, com the most common format. So let's see what that looks like. It's quite easy to do, as long as you can pick the right item here. So we'll hit the drop down, and you've got these percent of rows. That's not quite as useful on an, on an income statement, usually unless we're breaking it out in some way. You've got your columns which you would think maybe that would be the way to go for a vertical analysis and then you've got your income that's the one we typically want you could have a percent of expenses as well not quite as common you could do a percent of the column but not quite as common the percent of the income that's what we want because income revenue that's the goal of the business that's the main point so we want to compare everything to it so now we're gonna we're gonna pull out let's pull out the trusty calculator for some calculations and then so now we've got our income we can tell that this is a comparison to income because the bottom line of the income here hundred percent so it's comparing it to itself now it makes sense to look at the income line items and you're saying yeah it makes sense up here everything is a percentage of income just like on the balance sheet everything was a percentage of the assets let's go to the balance sheet just for a comparative view 
and you'll recall when we did this on the balance sheet, if I hit this drop down, you've got a bit different choices down here. We don't have as many choices because it's a point as of a point in time report and we're gonna choose the percent of the column on this one and then run that. And this compared everything to the assets, which makes sense, and the liabilities and equity to liabilities and equity. And that, that you visualize a nice pie chart when that happens. You go, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm just, I can break that out into a pie chart. It's kind of like looking at, a, at my investment portfolio, investing in bonds versus stocks and whatnot, or something like that. And these are investments in my assets in the business uh, that I'm using to generate future revenue compared to the total assets. If you look at the income statement, then usually we compare to revenue. The top half looks similar. These are all the income line items compared to total income. I can make a pie chart you know, of that if I wanted to. So this would be 2246.5 divided by the total 10200.77. Two places over on the decimal is 22.202. So, so that makes sense. But note that on the revenue side of things, you usually don't have this many accounts. You usually only have like one to five revenue accounts. Uh, they have more here because it's a construction kind of company. But on the on the expense side, it doesn't make as much sense. You're like, okay, well, I would expect then all my expenses to be compared to the total expenses. But no, we're going to compare all the expenses, those things that we had to consume in order to generate the revenue. That's what an expense is to what we use them for the revenue line item so you can't create a nice pie chart with the expense side of things this isn't going to add up to 100 percent in other words because we're comparing to the revenue line item so i can go up top you, you could do a bar chart if you wanted to if you want to do a graph on it so if you're if you're feeling like you need some kind of visual but we can then do the four seven one point eight six divided by the total uh income which is here divided by the 10200.77. If we move the, the two places to the right, you get 0.73%. So we're comparing everything to income. Note that the cost of goods sold is usually, uh, if you just sold inventory quite high, that's gonna be, that's why we have this comparison of the gross profit. And it's usually gonna be some, something that if someone just sells inventory, they're quite aware of the relationship between you know the cost of goods sold and the income. And then we can look down here on a percentage basis and we can see the dollar amount and we can also see the percentage as comparison uh, to the revenue. The revenue, in essence, what we're pulling in or earning, the expenses, what we consumed in order to generate that revenue. Note that if I'm comparing my data to prior data, I can compare the dollar amounts, but if I'm trying to benchmark to the industry average or to another company, which is usually larger than my company because I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to trying to uh, increase oftentimes, then I can't compare the dollar amounts, but I could compare the percentages. I could say, okay, how much is their cost of goods sold? How much is the industry average percentage cost of goods sold compared to their income, which gives us an idea of what their markups are for the inventory you know, that they're selling. How much do they spend on advertising? You know, do they spend a, you know, are they spending a lot on advertising? Advertising is one of those areas that's quite confusing for a lot of people, including myself. It just drives you kind of crazy because there's so much money that you spend on advertising. It just seems ridiculous. But in any case, then of course, you know, insurance, how much are they spending on employment? You can look at the key uh, line items here and compare them to the income line item. Okay. So then if you go up top, you could do the other kind of vertical analysis just to test them out, but they're not as common. That's the one you want to know. If you go to a percentage of the column, just to take a look at it, the total column adds up to net income. So now we're comparing everything to net income, the bottom line. So here it is, 100% on the net income. And if I was to compare you know, some other line item to it, you're going to say expenses are... are five two three seven point three one divided by one six four two point four six if i move the decimal two places to the right 318 so you're going to get some funny numbers this might be helpful for some for, for, for some ratio analysis but it's not the most common way you're going to see 
uh, this kind of report. So it could be useful in some cases, but it's probably not like the standard report that you would be generating in a package of reports. You could then do it a, a percentage of expenses. So now you're comparing everything to the expense line item, which is, is probably you know useful down here when you're looking at the actual expenses because now you can kind of look at more of a pie chart analysis in terms of your expenses and see where you're spending the most money in relation to total expenses. Here's your total line item. So all of your expenses right here will then will then total up to 100% and you can think of it in a pie chart format instead of comparing your expenses to the revenue generation. So that could be useful, I would think, just for this expense area, but but probably not as useful comparing your revenue to total expenses it's probably not as common uh, of a of a of a technique so i'm going to hit the drop down again your most common thing here would be comparing to income boom run it and then you could also have multiple periods where you include a vertical analysis so for example i could say i'm going to hit the drop down and change it from the totals to month or let's go to quarters quarters so now you've got multiple quarters that also give you the vertical analysis. So when we're starting to think about how we're going to present these reports, I typically think of the technique to be, I'm gonna start simple with a simplified profit and loss, possibly a single step profit and loss if I can, and then get more detailed going into it, assuming that the people I'm dealing with aren't accountants oftentimes. They don't want like to be overwhelmed with data. But sometimes they do, right? Sometimes you might say, hey, I don't need this redundancy of multiple reports that have the same information because I still have the total over here. Maybe you make one report that has a lot of detail on it and, 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 and therefore you don't need the more simplified reports that are giving you the detail or the, the same information in less detail. And so, and then you got to compare, you know, how many reports do I want with a vertical analysis? How much is that going to add versus clutter the, you know, the report? And then how many reports do I want to be putting together in terms of comparative type of reports? You probably want to break that out on a month by month or on, on the basis of I'm going to group my reports to, to those I'm going to give in a month by end and a quarter end and a year end. That's how I would think of it. I'm going to go back to the totals and then I'm going to just say that I would then customize it up top and then get rid of the cents brackets red this is what we do every time if i was going to give it to someone externally i'm going to change the header i'm going to make it a income let's say vertical let's say income statement vertical analysis sys and then get rid of the date time report basis boom and run it i was running so there you have it and then you could save that beautiful report, save customization so that when you're gonna print these out on a monthly basis, perhaps, I can go to the first tab, I can refresh that tab so it's fresh stuff is in it. It's just like eating a salad right from the garden. It's nice and fresh. And then I'm gonna go to the reports and then custom reports, there it is. There it is, that looks good. Okay, so let's just take a look at the business view just to see where we, where our stuff is located on the business view. We've only been looking at the reports, so it's pretty straightforward here. You'll recall here's the home page, the get things done page. That's what they call it. I don't know why. It's a little seems a little, but whatever. Home seems easier to say. Get things done. I get. I'm going to the get. That's. You got to go away from home to get things done usually unless you work at home i guess like most people anyway so here's the reports standard customization there it is